The great game of football starts like any other program, where at the very beginning it teaches the development of a child with the following goals like creating a fun environment, learning the value of athletic competition, by encouraging confidence, teamwork, and sportsmanship. A program that only teaches that, that not only teaches fundamentals of the game, but stresses the importance of academic achievement with positive role models. These values are a big part of the Muni Football League that never get placed on a score sheet, but far more greater than the importance of a score. We begin a journey today with championship games in the Cleveland Muni Football League with the Termite Division. That's ages six and seven, no weight limit. Many of them are playing for the first time. Welcome to Collinwood Field for the 2019 championship game between the Maple Heights Saints and the Collinwood Cobras. Hi, I'm Tim Wells and my partner John Good is in the house. John, give us some answers. Coaches on the field, a kid six and seven, are they gonna run the right way? <laughs> what should the viewers expect to see today? Well, you should you could come to expect in this game to see two very good teams at this age group, Tim. Like you said, it's the inaugural season for a lot of these these young student athletes, and they're a real delight to to, to watch. Uh, the Maple Heights Saints is high scoring as their tradition usually dictates, and the Collinwood Cobras, a young organization ahead of schedule, this is where it begins for them to start a tradition for many years to come. So obviously, we're going to talk first about the Maple Heights Saints. They come in with a 6-0 record under their coach, Lewis Fitzpatrick. They're ranked number four in offense with 127 points, four in defense with 38, three playoff wins. They beat the Pal 6 Red Dogs 13 to nothing, 33 to seven over Garden Valley, 20 to 14 over the Gunning Park Gators. What were the keys to the game that Coach Fitzpatrick gave you, John? Uh, Coach Fitz told me that, hey, we got a ball control. We got to keep uh, our hands on that ball and limit the turnovers. Control the outside edges. That's where a lot of kids at this age group tend to lose their discipline on that outside, and he wants them to be physical. Hit, wrap up, and bring them down. And obviously, when you even start with the youngsters, there's some exciting kids to watch. And with the Maple Heights Saints, their three K players, it starts with number zero, their quarterback, Kylan Woods. Yeah, Kylan Woods is smart. He's a, he has a high football IQ. Team captain, so he's a leader, and he's tough. Seventh leading scorer in the league, Tim, with 40 points. Then there's number 32, King Johnson, a running back, hard runner, physical, sneaky fast. Number five in the league in scoring, 47 points in the season. And then there's number 21, uh, Dallas Dash, adding on to that offensive firepower at running back. He's a ball hawk. He also plays defense. He's a great tackler, and this guy will put some wood on you. He's physical. And then when you look at the other side of the coin, it's the Collinwood Cobras. They come in at 5-1 and one under Coach Damon Jones. They have the number one offense in the league, 150 points. That's 25 points per game they were scoring. Number three in defense, only giving up an, a less than a touchdown a game. Playoff wins over the Glenville Elite Panthers 12-6 and over the Shaker Riders 26 to nothing. What were the keys that Coach Jones gave to you, John? Well, Coach Jones wants to win the line of scrimmage, Tim. He wants his, uh, his young offense and defensive line to come off and sustain blocks and, and get off blocks and, and, and get to the ball. He wants to secure the ball. Again, no turnovers and control the time of possession. So he believes those, th those three things are the key. And then when you look at the Collinwood Cobras, they have those outstanding key players as well. So fun to watch. It starts with their running back and middle linebacker, Aiden Miller. Yeah, Aiden Miller is a, is a heck of an athlete, and I'm looking forward to watching him from years to come. When you, After I read those statistics uh, from the Maple Heights Saints, it's hard to believe that there's a team that's even better than them offensively, and it's led by Aiden Miller. He's number two in the league and scoring 69 points total. He's a ball hawk on defense, hard to tackle, and he's fast. He's a leader. Number three, Jameer Johnson. He's the quarterback. He's, uh, he also plays safety. He's number nine in the league in scoring. He scored 36 points. He's great in the open field, got quick feet. He also has a high football IQ, and he's a leader and a team captain. And then you got number 12, Damon Jones. 
a left guard and defensive tackle. This guy's the heart and soul of the team. He's the one that keeps it, uh, keeps the pressure up front and does a good job of blocking. Uh, pressures the quarterback, best offensive lineman, causes havoc on defense at the line of scrimmage. And uh, you'll, we'll be calling his name a lot today. Well, you've heard it about the teams, the key players, the coaches. Right now, we're going to go over to Joe Wise, Jr., for the player introductions. Welcome to Collinwood Athletic Complex for today's Termite Championship game. Your contestants for today's game, the first team, the Maple Heights Saints. Number zero, from Ridgebrook, second grader, Kylan Woods. Double zero, from Central, kindergartner, Keyshawn Williams. Number one, from Abraham Lincoln, kindergartner, Ashton Bridges. Number three, from Glendale Primary, second grader, Marlo Wingfield, Jr. Number four, from Sunview, second grader, Raider Leon. Number five, from Westwood, third grader, Zaire Jefferson. Number six, from Sunview, second grader, Dylan Castleberry. Number seven from Nordonia, first grader, Dwayne Griffin, the third. Number eight from William Foster, second grader, Dylan Maddox. Number nine from Adelaide Stevenson, second grader, Arthur Banks, the third. Number 10 from William Foster, second grader, Elijah Wilkerson. Number 13 from Abraham Lincoln, first grader, Marion Woodson. Number 20 from CSA, second grader, Alexander Dykes. Number 21 from Central, second grader, Dallas Dash. Number 28 from Maple Heights, second grader, Demarion Nuo. Number 30 from Cleveland College Prep, second grader, Charles Shaw. Number 32 from JFK, Amarion Howard. Number 34, second grader from Roland King Johnson. Number 40, second grader from William Foster, J. Meyer Crimley. Number 42 from A.J. Rickoff, second grader, Kamari Small. Number 44, Peyton Jackson. Number 50 from Valley View, first grader, Braden Francisco. Number 52 from Citizens Academy, second grader, Jameer Williams. Number 54 from Case, first grader, LeBron Ford. Number 55 from Ramab Junior Academy, first grader, Richard Roach. Number 56 from Maple Leaf, second grader, Derek Martin. Number 57 from Campus International, third grader, Skyler Goodson. Number 80 from William Foster, second grader, Lamar Davis. Number 81 from William Rainey Harper, first grader, Artez Terry. Number 88 from A.J. Rickoff, second grader, Cartier Pickens, Jr. 
Organizational coordinator is John Watts and Lyman Moffitt. The coaches, the head coach on offensive coordinator is Lewis Fitzpatrick. The defensive coordinator is Alfonso Finley. The assistant coaches are Tremaine Jackson, Frederick R. Johnson, Marlo Wingfield Sr., Dwayne Griffith, and Shayla Jordan. The Maple Heights Saints. And now for their opponent, the Collinwood Cobras. Number one from Lincoln Park Academy, second grader, Robert Dykes. Number two from St. Francis, third grader, Major Perry. Number three from Noble Elementary, second grader, Jameer Johnson. Number four, first grader, Amir Wagner. Number five, from Citizens Academy, kindergartner, Amir Robertson. Number six, from East Academy, third grader, Marlon Bolden, Jr. Number seven, from Lakeshore, intergenerational, Taurus, King Jr. Number eight from Hannah Givens, second grader, Caden Gaines. Number 10 from St. John Nottingham, second grader, Josiah Levitt. Number 11 from intergenerational, first grader, Jeremiah Johnson. Number 12 from Noble Academy, second grader, Damon Jones. Number 15 from Hannah Givens, second grader, Anthony Lennox Jr. Number 17 from Our Lady of the Lake, third grader, Terrence Dyer. Number 18 from St. Tyus Aquinas, first grader, Anton Freeman. Number 19, Aiden Miller. Number 21, from Richmond Heights Elementary, kindergarten, Demarion Ward. Number 22, third grader, from Ohio Perry, King Talefero. Number 23, from St. Adelbert, second grader, Keenan Cobb, Jr. Number 24 from Bella Academy, second grader, Jaden Tucker. Number 25 from Citizens Academy, second grader, Anthony Roberson, Jr. Number 30 from Villa Prep, first grader, Wayne Williams. Number 31 from Bella Academy, second grader, Sean Adams. First grader from Bella Academy, number 27, Antonio Hopgood. Number 32, Early Learning Center, kindergartner, Ronald Houston. The organizational coordinator is Darnell Banks. The coaches, head coach is Damon Jones. Offensive coordinator is Michael Miller. Defensive coordinator is Karan Davis. The assistant coaches are Marcus Perkins, Robert Dykes, Anthony Roberson, and Jermaine Johnson. The Collinwood Cobras. Would you please stand and remove your hats for the playing of our national anthem.
So we are moments away from termite championship play in the start of the Muni football championship season here in 2019. First, we're gonna take a look at the officials that'll be calling today's game. Again, they're all certified through the Ohio High School Athletic Association, but they'll be doing a lot of patience today. Looking on the left is our head referee. His name is Leroy Carty, 15 years as a referee. A 1988 graduate of East Tech, he currently works at CMSD as the athletic director at East Tech and a linkage coordinator, which deals with at-risk ninth graders. In the middle is Marlon Henson, six years as a referee, 1994 graduate of Bedford. He currently works as an employment specialist. And on the right, Will Brown, 10 years as a referee, 1986 graduate of East High, and he's a sports administrator for the Cleveland Recovery Program. And John, when we look at the rules, there's some rules they'll have to deal with today. Yeah, Tim, like you mentioned before, this is uh, ages six, seven, and you can turn eight before August 1st. There's no weight limit in this division. There'll be one coach on the field for each team. On the offensive side, the coach is in the huddle, and then he moves back 10 yards so to stay out of harm's way. On the defensive side, he's in the huddle, and then he has to move back 20 yards to stay out of harm's way. Did eight minute quarters, regulation clock, four timeouts per team, per game, one additional timeout in each overtime. There's no kickoffs for the safety of the players. The ball begins play at the 35 yard line. There's no punts for the safety of the players. The ball is advanced 20 yards. The clock will resume at the snap after a 15 second runoff and it must be outside the opponent's 30 yard line. Scoring is conventional, a touchdown to six points. However, you do get two points uh, if you kick a, kick the ball through. Safety is two points. And again, like I said, if you kick the ball through, it's two points. And if you run a pass it in for an extra point, it's one point. So again, no, uh, no punting. We'll have the automatic punt rule, as John mentioned. These are youngsters, six to seven. This is the very beginning of their introduction into tackle football. And John, I'll tell you what, you look at him, I don't even remember playing this young when I was in here. <laughs> if you did, Tim, it's probably in the backyard with your cousins and your friends. You knew uh, where, you know, where, where to go, where to, what tree and which bush to jump over. But I tell you what, these kids here, uh, it's a great delight to start this championship season off with these two teams, Maple Heights, uh, Saints, with a great tradition of winning. Cleveland Cobras, again, like I mentioned, uh, a young organization, but you know the, the, the coaching and, and the play of the kids has really brought them fruit of a championship season. So I'm looking forward to it. We got beautiful weather for the championship games, and uh, it's going to be a true delight. So it's going to be first down and ten. The Maple Heights offense, quarterback Kylan Woods, King Johnson, number 34. He's the running back. Dallas Dash 21. On the line, it's Arthur Banks, LeBron Ford, Carlton Pickens, Kamari Small, Artez Terry, the two wide receivers, Elijah Winkerson and Marfield, Marlo Wingfield. Oh, ball's on the ground. And, and there's a fumble right away on the field. And we'll see if who recovers. Yeah, you can see right here there's a handoff, but number 34 didn't quite uh, take the ball. Quarterback was able to jump on it. Uh, Kellen Woods, number zero, a quarterback was able to get on top of the ball before the Cobras could rally to get there. So Keenan Cobb was in on the tackle for the first play, disrupting it. Second down and 11. They're going to it off. Woo, oh, good uh, step on. Oh, good step uh, on another one. Wow! There it is, number 34, King Johnson. Yeah, King Johnson. Uh, uh, there's no doubt that he knows exactly what to do with the football, Tim, when he gets a hold of it. And he also knows how to keep defensive players off of him. You see right here, he gets the ball on the left side. He's got it tucked away high. Get off me. Keeps, it on, keeps on running. Get off me. Just an excellent job with timing and the stiff arm. And a nice positive play on the second play of the season of the, of the, of the game. 
So we got first down and 10. Just underway in the first quarter in the termite division. These are six and seven year olds. Could carry it for a couple yards. Yeah, good job of holding on right there, waiting for the cavalry for the uh, for the Cobras. I didn't catch the number, but uh, that's an excellent job right there doing to wait to uh, bring down Johnson. He's a load. See it. It's um, second down and eight, about eight and a half. Saints line it up. Woods takes the snap. He looks like he wants to throw it, but pressure comes on him. He's got to try to go around the left side. He's not going to make much at all. I think he's going to be thrown for a loss. Good job by that defense of the Cobras closing in on him. Looked like he wanted to throw the ball at first here. Yo, no, he juggled it with his man in motion going around and he had to gather the ball and try to get it around left side to get some positive yards. But a good job by the Cobra defense to third and ten get him. And joining us throughout today's telecast, we'll have an official in the booth, Ralph King. He's been working the Muni Leagues all along. And Ralph, welcome to TV 20. And obviously termites are a different breed when you're out there refereeing. Yeah, anything and everything can happen at this age. So on the play, they pick up about four or five yards. And it was brought down by Jameer Johnson. They're going to try to catch him by rushing into the next play here, John. Yeah, this, uh, this, this Johnson kid, he's got quick feet. He knows how to hold on to the football, too. They all do. And they switched it up and looked like Kellen or Keelan Woods held on to it that time. They've been running behind that left tackle, Arthur Banks. Aiden Miller came up and made the stop, John. But it seems like they, they seem like they got some success on the left side. Yeah, LeBron Ford and Arthur Banks the third doing a good job of clearing out those linebackers for the uh, the Cobras have got to step up. Aiden Miller, King, Falafaro, and uh, Tyrese King. They've got to step up and make some plays. First down and 10. They're going to try to run it to the left again. There's that uh, hole. The same yes. tackle. Got a, got a Cobra player getting up kind of slow. Yeah, it's a good job right here. Blocking right there by Johnson, clearing the way for his uh, teammate, uh, Woods. Picking up a nice positive gain right there. Yeah, they're. Yes. Repeat first down. So let's look and see if we can get the replay here, Ralph, and look at this. See if we can pick up the hold in our screen. This is our first penalty of the ball game. Oh, it looks like that kid right there at the top at the top right of the screen right there Yeah, right there. Yeah, he's hugging him. Is that, is that definitely a hold Mr. King? Well that constitute what's a hold and uh, he actually just tackled him <laughs> <laughs> Impeded his progress So first and ten no first and 20 And they get a little bit of a run and again the Coach on the field is like let's run the hurry up keep going yeah, and Major got, Perry came up with the stop, John. Yeah, good job by Perry and Woods. It right here just takes the ball around right side and just tried to find the scene. He did get some positive yards before he's met with uh, all those Cobras. And this time they're going to the right, and again a nice job by it looks like Major Perry again on the left side, and Tar Torres King came up to make the stop. Yeah, this play calling looks like they're trying to trying to get trying to get them to go toward trying to get them trying to get the team to go toward the, the right and then back to the left. They're bouncing back and forth. I can see a misdirection coming somewhere. So third down 17. 
to go here in the first quarter. Team in the black is the Maple Heights Saints. Team in the blue, the Callenwood Cobras. Timeout. So we got a timeout on the field, and this is a great time to talk about Pee Wee programs with the Division of Recreation. Again, there's Pee Wee programs all the age from five to seven. It ranges from sports programs to art programs to dance programs to swim programs. Obviously, they're all free to you, the citizens of Cleveland. We hope you take time to contact your local recreation centers and they can put you in contact with what Pee Wee programs are going on right now. A lot of them will be running in the Pee Wee indoor soccer program where the kids learn to play soccer. And again, it's five, six, and seven year olds. It's a great opportunity. They're just finishing their flag football program. So now they'll be going into inside where it could be indoor soccer or basketball. Again, please contact your local recreation centers. They are free to you, the citizens of Cleveland. So with three minutes to go. Yeah, it looked like the Saints are taking control of the line of scrimmage here in this first quarter, Tim, and just moving the ball down the field methodically. A couple penalties has held them back, but we'll see how good they get this possession. Nothing doing there. Oh, he took the ball. He took the ball. Good job by the Cobra defense. Caden Gaines, the defensive tackle, took it right away from him, John. <laughs> As a play he'll remember for a long time, Tim. That's one of them background, one of those backyard plays right there. Just a good job by this defense holding them up. You can see they got men to the football. One, two, three, four. And he said, hey, I could about go take the football and run with it. A great run and a nice tackle. The Maple Heights defense came back and rallied to, to stop him. Yeah, good effort. And obviously, Ralph, when you're looking at that play, you know, the question becomes, was he stopped before they took the ball away? And I, I know you're going to tell me the infamous, right? Well, that's, uh, that's going to be a judgment call. And that judgment call is really a hard thing to see when you're at this age because the little kids are doing all sorts of things that you just don't expect but that was a great call yeah you can see right here he's still fighting and he's been conscious of carrying that ball up tight and high and he's falling down and he takes the football from him so I'm surprised they didn't call forward progress on that first 10 and there was a hit oh my I could hear it all the way up here yeah good job good penetration and that's been that's, that hit was made by a player we've been talking about already. He's trying to make up for that uh, player taking the, the ball from him. That was Johnson right there on the hit. Here we go. Uh-oh. Another one, another defensive play in the backfield. See it right here. It, they were in a hurry up offense and they, gee, they snapped the ball pretty quick. Got up to the line of scrimmage. Yes, they did. Got, po got positive yards, maybe one or two. But a good defensive play. Before that, another one. That was a replay. Oh, that was a replay. All right, Cobras, third and ten. And, yep, they had a little procedure on that play. Yep, illegal procedure on the Cobras. They went too fast, False start too quick. On offense. I believe it was the left side of the line. So we'll repeat third down. Third and 15. The Cobra coach has got to dial up a play that can get him significant yards. Fox running. Go 
think he's going to try to get to the outside here. I, I'm going to tell you this right now. I'm going to bring Ralph in here. I don't like this call one bit, on and I'm going to tell you why. Five-yard penalty. Repeat third down. Be up there telling him, back up. Get him set up. This is too young of an age group to sit back and just throw the flags. That doesn't make sense to me. But maybe there's a rule or the officials are instructed a certain way. So, Ralph, if you can tell us what the real deal is, I'm open to it. Well, at this point, Tim, I'm going to agree with you 100%. It's easier to move those kids back or this will be a long game and you could just do that every play. So, yes, the courtesy of putting those guys back and just resetting and going. Him right up the middle. He's going to break one to the outside. Uh -oh. Still going all the way down to the 40 yard line. It just looks like it might be a manageable fourth down play, Tim. Instead of kicking it, might want to take a chance on uh, running, maybe running this play again. It's a good job by the running back. He goes on the left side. He's picking and choosing his holes. Breaks a couple tackles, keeps his feet moving and getting positive yards. That's a great effort. That was Dalen Maddox that came up and made the stop. And when your safety's making a lot of stops, hey, tells you you could be uh, something you got to keep an eye on. Yeah, and that looked like uh, King, Father big, Farrell on that on that play carrying the ball. Big play right here, and we got a timeout on the field with the Collinwood Cobras. And we are almost at the end of the first quarter with four seconds to go. Folks, we'd like to remind you that today at halftime, we will have a very special guest. One of our main sponsors is again, Karen Butler from Neon. She will be stopping by and they've been a big part of the 2019 season. And, and John, it's, it's uh, one of those things where you look back and you say, 100 years of Muni football, I can bet there'd be a lot of stories and I know there's a, a some talk about trying to get some of the veterans around to talk about the program and the league from years ago. But can you share with us your memories of some of the things with Muni football? Yeah, Tim, uh, I think if I if I count about back correctly, I think I played in uh, year 51 of Muni football, 52. So it's been a lot of years that this organization has existed and contributed to the community of Cleveland and Greater Cleveland. Uh, my fondest memories are of Joe Wise, just uh, the instruction and the leadership that I got uh, as far as on the football instruction as a football player and, and uh, encouragement of being a, a student athlete. Uh, I couldn't have ended up uh, in a better place. I played for the Leland Beverage Browns in uh, 1973, and we practiced uh, down in uh, Wood Hill Park right at Kingsbury. And it's just a great memorable time for myself, winning the championship. Uh oh, go bad snap, balls on it. Oh, and they're going to give it a maple. They recovered it. Wow. I thought I thought that the quarterback recovered the football. Number nine there. Well, let's take a look at it here. If we got it, does the official get it right? You tell us at home. No, no, hey, come here. Hey, I need you to back up a little bit because you're just getting it. Well, we don't see enough of it. Well, yeah, he's got the football. He had it in his hand. Do you agree with us, Mr. Official? I do. They let the play. I don't understand. They let the play run, and he actually came up with the football. I, I, I don't understand it. That's a, that's a mystery. I think that was Marlowe Springfield or Wingfield in the background, in the backfield, playing quarterback at the time. And he secured the football. I don't, I don't see what the referee saw. So we start the second quarter of play. It's first down and 10. This is the first of four championship games that you will see on TV 20. We are Cleveland. Quarter change. Yep. I was waiting when they were going to figure out they needed to turn this around here. <laughs> well, we know that's a, we won't even say. We, I won't even say it. John, I won't even bring it up. Who's supposed to make sure we go the right direction? Yeah, yeah exactly. Well, uh, I'd, I'd like to jump in there, Tim. They, they did catch it before the snap, so that's all good. Yeah. Pretty amazing if they had snapped it going the wrong way. 
that would have happened, I would wonder what, how would they figure that out? Muni Follies. Yeah. <laughs> we said, John, hey, which way were they going to go? We didn't think it would be the referees. No, this exactly. <laughs> exactly. First down and 10. Second quarter, here we go. Good snap. Good hand off. Got a hole and a nice tackle by that on, linebacker. Good job. That's a well-executed play right here. Got the ball to number 81. He saw, he sees a hole and he just gets it right up field to get positive yards. On that carry was number 81 for the Maple Heights. That was Artez Terry, William R. Harper School. He's a seventh grader, seven years old. On offense, five yards, repeat first down. So on this level, we do expect some penalties. Yeah, temperature today, they did, told us, was going to be around 70 degrees. I think it's more like 75. It's a beautiful day, Tim. It's, I mean, we couldn't ask for better weather to start this championship series in 2019 for Muni football celebrating its 100th year. I just like to take the time right now to thank the parents for their participation in the league this year. All the coaches, cheerleading coaches, football coaches, again, all of our sponsors and everybody who uh, helped us put this season together. Field men, referees, everyone. Clean snap, taking it himself. Oh, keeping those feet moving. You know, John, we would be remiss that uh, throughout the year, the Cleveland Clinic sending yes. those trainers out and looking at the, making sure the kids are safe at some of the games. What a blessing they've been helping us out. That, is, that has been really underrated. That was a good hit there by the defender and gang tackler on uh, Kellen Woods. It's a good job on both sides, offense and defense. Big down here, third down. Then remind me next year we never have a blue and a silver because you can't see nothing here. I'm trying. I'm still. I thought um, yeah. it was my eyes. I'm... I thought it seems I could see it, but nothing. <laughs> Are they giving it to Johnson? He knows what to do with it. Get out of my way. He's headed to the outside. This could go. Get out. One missed tackle. Another oh, missed tackle. Oh, boy. We're going go, to go. the house. Oh, yeah. There's, a dirt, there's some linen on the field. Oh, oh my. Oh, no. No. Great effort there by Johnson. Everybody in the house is looking at it. <laughs> we haven't got the call yet. Let's see what the call is. They're all walking back. That was John A. What, 55 yard run? Great effort there by Mr. Johnson. Doing what he does best. Making people miss, stiff arming them. So there's where the penalty was. It's five yards, it looks like. Yeah, now it's 10. It's gotta be, what are they calling here, Dr. King? The only thing that they could call here is an illegal block or a hold. That's gonna be 10 yards from the spot of the foul. So we'll see if we can get it right now from the head referee, Leroy Carter. Have a holding on the offense. 10 yard penalty, repeat third down. Wow, I wonder if we can see it in this play. Uh, right there maybe. That oh might, that man. Might, that might be it, but that's oh. not much of a hold. He had that guy beat. And I don't see anywhere else where there might be a hold. Um, 
You don't have to say anything, Mr. King, on this case. I understand. I, I will say so. Uh, I just didn't think there was holding of any sort at that point. Yeah, it didn't impede the player's progress or anything. Wow. Collinwood bringing the wood. So from a touchdown called back to now fourth down and 25. Ouch, that hurts. Yep, so they're going to punt it. They're punting it. Torrance King came up and made the stop, and we've already got the signal for the automatic punt roll. Good job, King. That was an excellent play. Both these teams get off to a pretty good start on offense in the first half, Tim. Uh, Maple Heights Saints is a little bit more consistent than the Collinwood Cobras in the second half in scoring. So the Collinwood Cobras have got to get on the scoreboard if they want to stay competitive in this game because the trend is that Maple Heights can put them up in all four quarters. So first down at 10, the Cobras take over. They dodged that one. Uh oh, a lot of room. One man to miss. Can't make, can't make him miss. That's what you're looking for. Come up and make the tackle. Yeah, that's the quarterback. Yeah, Kyrene Woods. That's the key, John, when you're talking about at the termite level, that team that can block or tackle the best, especially not making not making a lot of missed tackles. That makes the difference. It does, and it does. And, and, and you can really have a successful season if you got two, three, one or two very good athletes and let everybody else buy in on the blocking until they start developing. Uh-oh, ball's on the ground. Picks it up. Picks it up. Wow. That was a bad exchange for number two right there, Major Perry, who was able to pick the ball up and try to get positive yards. And then Marlon, Marlo Wingfield Jr. And now they got a player down. Well, why they are ten him. We'll take a take a walk away here just for a second. We'll be right back up with some more termite action. packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. <laughs> but the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? All right, pal. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Why do you ask that, kiddo? Can I play with it? No, absolutely not. It's not a toy. You know that. Anyway, I need it to protect you, your sister and mom. But what about the eight kids who get shot every day by mistake? Where'd you hear that? Where do you keep it? <laughs> it's hidden. I bet it's on the top shelf of the closet, under your sweatshirts. Is it loaded? Remember when I found my Christmas gifts? You always told me to be curious. No. No, that's not what I meant. It was just me and Mom. I could use the gun to protect her. No, Justin, I promise. I'm always here for you. But, Dad, you're not always here. Okay, 
Okay, welcome back to Collinwood. The good news is the young man is fine. He's ready to go. The bad news is there's some more linen on the field. A lot of linen on, on the field office. today. <clears throat> False start, illegal procedure. Three thirty to go. At halftime, we'll talk to both head coaches. We'll also hear from our sponsor, and we'll get a chance to catch up with the Cleveland Clinic trainer that's right here on the field to talk about their experience of giving back in the, the Muni Football League. Yeah, Jamil Johnson, good handoff. I didn't know who had the football. Some good backfield action right there. Looks like uh, we got two Cobras now, but just one now. Artis Terry on the stop. Now we got two of them. Uh, right there, you can see. Went around to get a football to the running back right there. He got hit. Looked like he got hit right in the back. Yeah, right there, lower hip area. Right behind the hip pad. Usually that area is protected, but right behind the hip pad. It looks like he's going to be okay. So obviously, uh, Ralph, you've seen this happen a lot of times with kids, especially any game you do, you have the potential for a kid going down. What, what are the instructions for the officials? How do they handle that? Well, you want to actually let the medical personnel come in and handle that. But once it turns into a possible concussion, you want to make sure that you jot down the number, make sure that that kid does have some medical attention given to him, and then see that the medical attention allows him to come back and play in the game. So it's the referee's responsibility to check on the sideline of the injured player with the medical professional to see if the player is cleared to come back and play? Well, the, not quite, John. What you want to do is you want to let that medical personnel make all the decisions, and then he will inform you that this kid's come, he can, he's good to come back in. And so if they come back and say, hey, we, pot, we have a possible head injury, maybe concussion, and he tells you that, what's the next step? Well, for me, if I'm on that field and that kid's done for the day, I want to err on the, and the caution of safety for that young man because football is not important. His health is more important. And that is what's most important is the player safety of our players. And you can also disqualify a player right at the point of impact, correct? That is correct, John. You can do that. If, these, if you think it's, a, it's a, a possible ejection for the egregious hit, yes. And John, on the Muni football side of it, uh, we had trainings yes. where we, there, each coach had to get one of their staff be there a safety coach that would receive that training before the season. Is that correct? That is correct, and it's been expanded, as a matter of fact. Every coach that is certified by uh, USA Football is also certified in player safety. So we got multiple coaches on the field to look out for those health issues that could uh, limit a player from playing his best and be harmful to him after he leaves the football field. Uh, I must say that uh, with the coaching techniques that we've installed, coaches paying attention, that injuries are way down. To the outside and a nice hit and a solid tackle right there. Uh, if you can read that number, God bless you. Yeah, good job right there. Court, it's just a direct snap, trying to get around the left hand, number zero. That's right there, Jameer Woods Johnson, man. doing a good job. Way to go, Jameer. Yeah. He's been all over the place today. Some Noble Elementary, ninth leading scorer in the league. He's had a fumble recovery in the playoffs. He's also... Uh, He's predicting the Cleveland Browns to still have a rough sale to the proving the record. He asked the kids that curiously just to get the real. How many games do you think the Browns are going to win? He says they're going to win four more. <laughs> That's all right. That's about eight and eight, maybe six and ten. Outside. Oh, Here we yeah. Go again. He's got Another a lot of room minute. over there. Good hustle by that Collinwood players. Not giving up on that play. 
Uh oh, we got more laundry on the field. So we got one guy out of bounds. Block in the back on the offense, number 10, 10 yards. Repeat second down. Number so. 10 uh, for the Maple Heights uh, Saints, Elijah Wilkerson. See if we can pick it up here on that block in the back. It is so frustrating for a coach to get a good play, get your man downfield with the ball, and then someone makes a mistake like this, and it really doesn't affect the play, but you committed the fracture right there. That really, that really sprung it right there. You, you know, can see right there. Where's that block at, right? Right on the left side of the screen. Oh, yeah. As you come in right here, you'll see the Cobra man flying, and he coming right behind him, yeah. And that's where Leroy saw the infraction had to throw him. So, yep, that was directly involved with the play. Oh! Nice job. Wow. Good tackle. Johnson's got to get that block. He just whiffed on the block. He was gone. So we got third down 15. It was Keenan Cobb that came up and made the stop. Hey, here we go, Woods. Johnson, big physical guy, and he just, he doesn't even go after the guy. He just stayed flat. Left his quarterback hanging out to dry. I'm sure he'll, I'm sure he'll make up for it, though. And Keenan Cobb from St. Adelbert, a seventh grader. He's a Browns fan and an Odell Beckham. Seven years old, I hope. Mm -hmm. Not a seventh grader. Not on this level. Yeah, seven years old. <laughs> so we got third down. It looks like it's about 15 or 16 yards from here. Good job by Sean Adams right there, bringing down the big fella Johnson. King fella Farrell. Came up with the stop, number 22, the linebacker. We'll see it right here. They're starting to get some confidence against this big guy. They're, they're just attacking him. That's a good stiff arm right there by Johnson. And there's the takedown right there. That's a little guy, too, and he's not afraid of Johnson. That was excellent. So with the termite division, they get that extra timeout. But now the clock runs because there was no timeout called. And that brings us to halftime where momentarily we will be talking to the head coach from the Maple Heights Saints as they round him up to come over. And first of all, before we get him set up, I had a chance to catch up with Karen Butler from Neon. And we got her views of their sponsorship with Cleveland Muni Football. Our main sponsor that has made a huge impact in the 2019 season with Cleveland Muni Football, obviously Karen Butler. Neon, I remember Karen Butler from the city. City of Cleveland, right. right. <laughs> but health and everything has been always one of the yes. big things with you. Let's talk a little bit about NEON and what was done this year. Well, great. So we partnered with the Muni League, and we thought it was such an important thing to do to focus upon the health of the kids, making sure that they have access to comprehensive services and making sure that they're safe and healthy when they're playing. So we were able to provide the physical examinations that the children needed in order to play. So it was a great partnership and a great way to connect with the Muni League. And obviously... You're talking about how many kids we have in our league and we're trying to get them to go and get their physicals yes. and some parents can't afford it and they run into those issues. But the other part of this is when I'm hearing neon, I'm hearing it's more than just the physical part. Yes. You want to, you're looking at the whole child and saying, hey, here's where we can help and things that we can do. Yes. And there's several locations that you have throughout the city in uh, Cleveland, Ohio. Can we talk a little bit about those locations? Yes. So NEON has seven locations throughout Greater Cleveland. And because of that, it makes us one of the largest uh, federally qualified health centers or community health center networks in the entire Greater Cleveland area. And they're located in the neighborhoods. And that's very important because we want to be accessible. So we want to make sure that there are no transportation barriers, that uh, cost is not an issue. And we are really about making sure that our 
children are healthy, that our families are healthy, and that our neighborhoods are healthy. And, and how did it go the first year with the kids coming through? Yeah, it was great. It was great. Um, parents often brought them in. Sometimes the coaches brought the kids in, and our providers were eager to make sure that they got taken care of. They probably wanted to talk football the whole time they were in Probably there. so, because they're <laughs> excited about it. I mean, and it's great to see the excitement at the game here today. So glad to be a part of this. Well, Karen, one of, one of the things we want to say is thank you so much. Pl you our guys pleasure. have really made a difference. And um, there was a story that we saw in the media years, months ago about where uh, it wasn't in our city. It was another city where kids didn't get a physical. Yes. And all I kept thinking about, oh, my God, what had happened? This kid had a precondition. We didn't catch it. They didn't know about it. And every time I hear the word neon, I go, I just breathe like, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Hallelujah. Yeah. And that's so, so very important because we need to know um, and, and be able to establish a baseline for the kids so that we know if there's something different or if there are any pre-existing conditions. And we're here to take care of that. We um, base our treatment model on prevention. We want to make sure that um, all of the services that they need in order to prevent various types of illnesses are provided for them and made available to them. Well, first of all, as you can see, folks, Neon, again, they are a big sponsor of Cleveland Mini Football. We appreciate everything you've done for this season. We look forward to future and even doing more. Thank you so much. It's our honor to be a part of this wonderful initiative. Thank you, Karen. Thank you. So we're back at Collinwood Field, and we have the head coach of the Maple Heights Saints, Lewis Fitzpatrick. So coach, uh, your kids have been on a roll, 6-0. and oh, You've done well in the playoffs. You got a very special team, but uh, it's been a battle, 0-0. You seem to be like your worst enemies with uh, the, the penalties. Yeah, the penalties is kind of getting us and uh, it's kind of stopping our momentum, but I'm talking to the kids and make a couple of adjustments. We're going to uh, correct that. And yeah. obviously with this young age group, it takes a lot of patience and understanding. What will you tell them at halftime? I'll tell them just keep uh, no pressure, no pressure. Just keep doing what they need to do. Uh, just watch the uh, silly mistakes that they're making and, and, and stay relaxed. Uh, no pressure. That's what our thing been for the playoffs is no pressure because we've been through a lot of adversity. Hey, Coach, this is John. Congratulations on making it to the finals. Thank you, sir. Um, I noticed that in your offensive philosophy and you're handing the ball off, there's a lot of crisscrossing. There's a lot of misdirection. How were you able to communicate communicate that to your kids and uh, them being effective at it? It's brilliant. Um, we keep it simple. Uh, we run just only like four or five plays throughout the whole year, so they got it in muscle memory. As long as they have it in their muscle memory, even tight games like this where we have, they'll, they'll keep it going. We'll get it going. Misdirection is big at this level. Yes, it is, and King Johnson is a heck of a force to, to bring down. Again, like Tim said, you eliminate those penalties, keep making those big plays, and you'll have a successful certain second half. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yep, good luck to you. Thank you. So there's the head coach from Maple Heights. And now we're going to try to grab the Cleveland Clinic. His name is Tom Wyman. And uh, get a chance to talk to him because they played such a special role in the Muni Football League. Tom, I don't know if you can hear us. Yeah, uh, I can hear you, sir. Hey, first of all, Tom, this is Tim Wells from TV20 with Hi, John Tim. Good. And Tom, you know, with the trainers coming out and being part of the Muni Football Oh, the experience of doing it and the the, uh, the issues that you deal with dealing from the Cleveland Clinic and how important it is. Can you tell us a little bit about the experience you've had? Yeah, it's been it's been good today. Uh, haven't seen too many injuries, which is always nice. Um, you know, with the little termites here, we got a uh, little bumps and bruises, but nothing too serious. So coaches do a nice job of helping them off the field and um, you know getting them back over there. You know, we got a chance to talk about the issue of. When they have the more serious ones, like it appears it could be a concussion sure. or head injury, what procedure do we, you follow? Once you feel that, are you just informing the coach? Uh, yeah, I'll do a, a physical exam, just kind of check them out, get a sense of how they're feeling. Um, if there's any symptoms, you know, headaches, dizziness, they look off, things like that, then we'll pull them out of the game and just let the coaches know not to run back, go back in for safety reasons. Hey, Tom, this is John Good. Again, I want to echo Tim's sentiments and thank you for participating. Uh, on the safety side of uh, of, uh, of our football extravaganza here, 
Uh, you look like an athlete. Were you an athlete? <laughs> Just bringing back memories of uh, uh, your bit. old days? Yeah, I played football in high school. Did you? What school did you go to? Uh, Willoughby South. Okay, Willoughby South. So you blocked, uh, you ran with Kareem Hunt. Right? Uh, he was a, He's a little younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> I wish we had him when I played. We weren't very good. Well, I know you're glad to see him on the Cleveland Browns. I want to thank you Absolutely. for your participation and keeping our players safe. And uh, good luck in your career and keep up the good work. All right, you're welcome. Thanks. Thank you. All right, bye. Thank you. Tom Weimer from the Cleveland Clinic. You're at the field today and, again, making sure that the kids are taken care of with all their health issues or possible injuries. We are so grateful for them to come out and volunteer their services to get here. Well, when we come back, we will have the head coach from the Collinwood Cobras, Damon Jones. It takes less than one minute to find out if you may have prediabetes. You can do it here. But you probably won't. You're busy. Kids, work, show coming back in 48 seconds. So let's do this now. Hold up one finger if you're a man, women, zero. Three more fingers if you're over 60, two over 50, one over 40. If you're not sure, keep in mind you're sitting on a couch right now. So one more finger if you're not very active. One finger if yes, zero if no. One yes, zero no. Next, find the body type that looks most like you and hold up that many fingers while I look around awkwardly. And that's it. If you're holding up five fingers or more, you probably have prediabetes. Sorry to be so blunt, but hey, you're busy. Just go to the site. Alvin and the Chipmunks want to remind you, bacteria can hide in food and make you ill. Wow. But you can keep bacteria from ruining your day with four simple steps. Clean. I'm waiting for the rinse cycle. Separate. <laughs> Cook. Fire in the hole! And chill. We chipmunks are notoriously tidy. Check your steps. The road trip to food safety starts at foodsafety.gov. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at autismspeaks.org. Welcome back to Collinwood Complex, where we're looking at the championship game on the Termite Division. We're joined by Coach Damon Jones. Coach Jones uh, of the Cobras. Coach, your team is fighting and hanging in there. You got a tough task trying to tackle this Johnson guy. And uh, with the quarterback Woods, two big play guys for them. Um, pleased with the game plan so far? Uh, this is it's just been an up or down battle so far. There's a lot of things that we could have did different, but we holding them to zero a half. So we just got to get back to the drum board and stick to what our keys to the game is, and we should come out okay. A lot of mistakes, a lot of uh, penalties. Uh, you got your boys calmed down, and we're going to eliminate that in the second half. Yeah, from right now, but I can see we should be good to go. We should be clicking on all cylinders. Hey, how you doing, Coach? This is Jason Dunn. Hey, look, looking at your trends through the uh, regular season, as far as third quarter scoring, you guys scored pretty good in the third quarter. Um, is there anything you guys you plan on doing differently this half to try to get that clip, you know, established in the third quarter? Pretty much, we're just gonna stick to what we do all year, man. Just come out, line up, and play hard nose Cobra football. Okay. Good luck in the second half, Coach. Appreciate it. All right. We're back with the second half of football. We're about to start. We're scoreless here in the third quarter as see Coach Damon 
Jones jog across the field to get join his team to get ready. Offensive coordinators out on the field for the Cobras. They'll start off with the ball on their own 35 yard lines. The referees are signaled. Ball is in play. And we'll see if uh, we can get some team on the on the scoreboard here in the second half. Yeah, you got Coach Mike Miller out there calling the offense. He's a veteran coach, been around for, for 10 plus years. So we'll see what he can dial up here. Some miscommunication in the backfield. The quarterback and running back ran into each other. But hey, end result, still a positive run up the middle. Yeah, it's a good job at least keeping their heads and not putting that ball on the ground. Uh, see right here, like you said, they ran into each other, but able to get the, get the ball handed off. And there was a hole there, and he took advantage of it. You know, that was great blocking by the offensive line. They were able to hold their blocks enough for the running back to still get through that hole. Yeah, these numbers are so tough to read, folks. So if we don't call out your your uh, son your, or your uh, Ken's name, please forgive us. We'll get it sooner or later. Our spotters here are working hard to interpret those that, those numbers. No, it's great pressure up the middle, but even better job of the quarterback of hanging on to the ball and getting the handoff off to the running back. Yeah, it's showing a little bit of frustration there, but the successful play is number two is the ball carrier on that play, Major Major Perry. You take a look at it right here. And you had immediate pressure up the middle right there. And yeah, good penetration right there in the defensive line, but a great block. As you see the tackler right there, number eight. Dalen Maddox for the Saints. So we got a third down and about two yards to go. Line up single back in the backfield. And we have a handoff to the right side. Works his way back left. That'll be enough for a Cobra first down there. And that right there is number seven for the Collinwood Cobras. There you see Johnson in on the tackle and that that's time. Torres King. Johnson Winfield. Wingfield, I'm sorry. Nifty running there to pick up that first down. Yeah, he uh, started off a little slow getting into the hole, but once he once he got it together, he, he was going forward. So let's bring up a first down right here for the <coughs> Collinwood Cobras. Once again, got an offset eye formation. Hand off to the running back. He stopped this time as he tried to bounce it back to the left. Yeah, there it is. Johnson once again on the tackle. Number four also for the Saints. Raider Leone. I'm going to say Leon. And that was number seven on the carry again. Torres King for another short game. Both these teams making it to the championship game. The Maple Heights Saints have been here before. This is the first time for the Collinwood Cobras. Again, the Cobras number one in offense, scoring 150 points, averaging 25 points a game. Here we go, handoff. Oh, no, he faked the handoff. Quarterback keeper off to the right side, and he's corralled by a host of Saints. Yeah, a lot of, lot of, lot of linemen for the Cobras standing around while, while number four for the, for the Cobras fights for his life. That was... Uh, Amir Wagner for the Cobras. He's trying to find some room, but couldn't quite get there. Now, are you surprised by the 0 0 score, seeing that we have, we have two of the top scoring offenses in the entire conference? Yeah, I am. I'm, 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 I'm shocked. Matter of fact, you know, I, I looked at uh, when we had the uh, keys to the game, the players to watch. We got number seven leading score, number five leading score, and the second leading score in this game. Man. So, uh, it's just a matter of somebody getting loose. We did get Johnson loose on a big play, but unfortunately it was an illegal block. On the defense, five yards, repeat third down. So if the Saints can repeat that effort on that play, they, you know, they'll have a chance to win this football game, but they've got to eliminate the penalties. Now we have referee Ralph King with us here today. Now, Ralph, at this level right here, we have six and seven year olds. And I'm, I'm sure you can call a penalty on every single play when you're dealing with these babies. So how much leeway do you get these teams? 
Well, every, everybody has a different perspective on the, on the game. And, and for me, I'm going to try to actually give them as much as possible because their mindset at, at this age is more so of just playing and just having fun. So you want to just let them have fun at this age. But, uh, yeah, at any level of ball, you could call a penalty every play, but more so here. Okay, so, so you want to correct them. It's more about teaching with these with these kids. That, that is correct, John. Here we go. We got a third down and short. Collinwood Covers offset eye to the left side. There's the hand. Oh, the yeah. Back. And he bounced it outside. He's able to turn that corner. And he'll be close to a first down. That's number 19, Aiden Miller on the carry. Yeah, Johnson met him in the backfield almost when he got the football, Jason. But he didn't wrap him up. You can see right here, he gets the ball, boom. He just pushes him back. And then you got number four out here who's not in position to make the tackle. Couldn't quite get there. It's a good hard hit to knock him out of bounds. And that carry was enough for Collinwood first down. And they needed that to sustain this drive and, and keep the keep the sticks moving. You see Coach Mike Miller in that huddle. He's all fired up. He's got a first down. He's trying to get his kids pumped up. You know, they want to try to get this drive and get, get it, you know, end result, six points out of this drive. So, so offset eye to the right side, hand off again. This is number 19, eight Miller to the oh, right and outside. Run. And he's got some space, oh, he's got his he shoulder got some square. Room. Good job. Another big pickup by number 19, Aiden Miller, and that'll be enough for another Collinwood Cobra first down. Yeah, Aiden Miller does a real good job of just pretty much just running to green, you know, just running to an open space and getting the ball upfield and, and getting positive yards. The defense did have an opportunity to get him down right there, took the wrong angle, and then you got number 10 right here that just can't quite get there to wrap him up. Good move inside. And he was able to get upfield for a first down. And if you look at if you look at Aiden Miller for his age, he's a tall kid. Yeah. You know, he's got a long stride. You know, he's able to go out there and, and beat those guys to the edge. Yeah, he, he is tall. I, I noticed him in the lineup when they were introducing the players. And that was the first thought that came to my head was, wow, he's uh, he's got some height on him. He's much taller than the rest of his his teammates. And he is a key player on this Cobra team. He's, he's going to be fun to watch as he grows up. Okay, and let's got see. Got some it. confusion now. And here we go. Directly uh -oh. up the middle. That's not confused. He's no. still moving. Still keeping his feet moving. Oh, straight blast up the middle. It looks like the referee is giving him all the way up to the 19-yard line. So a little forward progress there. Yeah. Yeah, Saints defensive coordinator Alonzo Fin Alfonso Finley. Uh, he's got to try to get his troops together. Got to get this defense fired up. You need to stop right here. Billy. Hey, Billy. Billy. They really do, but the Cobras has got to keep executing the football. 220 and counting in this uh, third quarter. Uh, again, like you mentioned before, Jason, about the scoring in this quarter for him is pretty much downhill for the for the Cobras. As, but the Saints stay consistent throughout all four. So it's very important, I think, that the Cobras get in uh, on this drive. We're coming on, we got a handoff. That was to a the true right handoff, side again. too. That was a true handoff. And the Cobras is finding some <laughs> success going off that right side. So it looks like Coach Mike Murch found something on that right side. Yeah, the quarterback turned. Uh, Jameer Johnson turned and gave the ball off. He truly just handed it off. He didn't put it in the basket or anything. He's like, here, <laughs> here take, this take this and take the rest of those guys with you. Get them away from me. <laughs> we have a third down and short. This is right here where you want to buckle down. This is all about the guys up front right here. Who's going to get that push, offensive line or defensive line? Yeah. Jameer Johnson <clears throat> stretched to the line of scrimmage and gets on the center. Tight like, bunch set. Yeah. It looks like this could possibly be a quarterback sneak. It's the handoff. And he's met in the backfield. Right. Looks like he might be short. That's a good job by that defense. Marlo Mar uh, Marlo Wingfield Jr. again 
making a big play and called his name a couple of times. He was just able to sneak right through there. there. Jason, he's just able to sneak Untouched. right through there and, and, and did a good job of wrapping him up. Yeah. You know, and that's the push you need. And like I said, Coach Finley, he's going to he's going to make the, the proper adjustments. He's going to make sure his defensive guys are in place. So here we go. This is a pivotal fourth down right here. And it's been a long draft for the Collinwood Cobras. Fourth down, about one to go. Nice balance play. to the left. And straight up the middle. It looks like they're stopped again. Big stop wow. by the defense. Big stop by the Saints defense. Wow. And, and look at Finley. Look at Coach Finley over there. One arm and all. Look at him. He's pretty pumped up about that stance by his defense. Yeah, they, 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 the forward progress didn't didn't quite get to the to the marker they needed to get to. It was uh, we got we got a sideline view right here. He, he looked like he needed to get to the line, and he never got to that. Never got to that line. Yeah, and they tried to go with a quarterback sneak. I mean, Coach Mike Miller had the right play call. See number 21 comes up with the football Dallas dash celebrating that fourth fourth down stance and this could make for a long long fourth quarter. Flip the field momentum shifts. Now see coach Lewis and Patrick and the Saints offense can see if they can dial anything up. Yeah the number one thing they got to do is they got to corral Johnson and they got to keep an eye on they got to keep an eye on um, on Woods, the quarterback. Dallas Dash flashes from time to time. You got to keep an eye on him, and you got to keep an eye on Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah Wilkerson. And don't forget about Marlo Wingfield either. They, they, they got weapons. Woods and Johnson, two top ten scorers. That's a direct snap off the right uh -oh, side. Oh, made a man oh, miss it. He's upfield. There he goes. He's got sideline. There he goes. He's got, He's got the sideline. Oh, he got another block. He's going all the way, and they've got a guy chasing him. He's trying to catch him. He's going to get there. Great hustle. Wow. That was great hustle. Number two. That was number two on the, on the chase down, Major Perry. He never gave up on the play, and he went for him. When he strapped the stride, he was trailing for a while. Yeah. He caught up with him. Yes, he did. Excellent, excellent job by Major Perry, knowing that this the play is – uh, one that could put the game away for him against him and he just kept on trucking kept on running and, and that was one of the kids you mentioned that Colin Woods once he once he got a shoulder square to the line of scrimmage and got outside of just a foot race yeah just a good job I, I, I just can't tell you how proud I am of number two right there just hanging in there major Perry that might be the game saving player to, you know that ends the third quarter so we're at all zeros now. We're about to go ahead into the into the fourth quarter. Your score: the Collinwood Cobra zero, Maple Heights zero. Become a professional American Red Cross certified lifeguard today. You must be at least 15 years of age be able to swim 500 yards nonstop, retrieve a 10 pound weight from the bottom of a pool and pass a written test. Lifeguard training classes are signing up right now. For more information, call 664-3018. That's 664-3018. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeastern Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates, and alternative ways of dealing with pain, which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so know the risk.
here to the, for the start of the fourth quarter. Maple Heights has the ball, first down and 10. Wow, what a great way to start off this uh, championship series, Jason. 0-0 in the fourth quarter. Who would have thought? Two powerhouse offenses like this, but the center on the move right now. Oh! Made a man oh! And that was another big touchdown saving tackle by the Collinwood Covers. And there's Mr. Woods again, rested up after that break. Goes around the right side, just picking his way uh, through the defense of the Cobras. That's Made a man miss right there. And there's uh, number 13. No, it's number 19, Aiden Woods. Bringing him down. I'm sorry, Aiden Miller. Yeah. Good job, Aiden. All right, let's see if the Cobras can keep him out, but I think they're going to get a steady dose of number 34 now. Yeah, first down and go to go from the eight yard line. That's the direct nope. snap, and that's, that's, the wood. that's number zero. And he's pushing the pile right now. That'll be enough for about a six yard gain. That'll put him right there around the two yard line. Yes, yeah, just a good job. Coaches on the same side of the ball, just playing it safe. Don't want to have an exchange, take a chance on the fumble. Just give it to one of their playmakers. They give it to their uh, all-star, Keelan Woods. And you just look at the, effort, the extra effort you're getting out of Woods right now. He understands, he understands the magnitude of this game. He understands what's at stake, and he's out there putting it all on the line right now. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. And that offensive line, that offensive line is helping him as well. They know they smell, they smell blood in the pay dirt, and they want to get there. So here we go. We got a second down and goal. Ball rested about two yard line. Saints in the shotgun. That's a direct snap. Oh, yes. big play. Big on defensive play. And that was number 19 shooting through the gap. That's number 19, Aiden Miller. Aiden Miller, we've called his name a couple times today. There he is right there, untouched, bringing down the big fella Johnson. We had nowhere to go. A couple Cobras getting there to help him help bring him down. Right now, it's a chess match right now. This is a big third down right here. He lost the he lost the guard on that play. So we're looking at a third and goal. We're about the three and a half yard line here. This is the most important play in the Cobra season right here on defense. Shotgun set, direct snap. Johnson again. Handoff. He's pushing, he's pushing, he's trying. He's not gonna get there. All right, the interior of that line stood up. Wow. Woo. Fourth down coming up here. Wow. Great job by that defensive line. Now right here with this fourth down coming up, this is going to come down to field position. Look at this. Major Perry, Major Perry, Caden Gaines, Sean Adams, and they Demond held Jones, Keenan Cobb. Excellent job. They all held on for dear life. Amir Wagner closing in. The bottling him inside. Don't give him the outside. Robert Dykes doing the same on that on that on that left side. Good job. So we got a fourth down and goal coming up from about the two yard line. The biggest fourth down of the season for both programs. Saints line up in shotgun. Outflanking them to the uh -oh. right. And Woods cuts and inside. Woods. Wow. And that's touchdown. That's number zero, Allen Woods. Yeah, just a good job by Woods, setting that man up on the outside, setting him up for an outside move. He looked outside, put his foot in the ground, and cut back inside. Uh, just a good, good ball player, good high IQ football player, doing what he does, what he's been doing all season, and uh, got the ball in the end zone. And that'll give us our first score of the ball game. St. Six, Collinwood zero. Wow, this and is going to be a point. great season. This is going to be a great championship season, Jason. And starting off with the little fellas like this, it's, uh, it's a beautiful thing. We got the weather. We got the play. So, hey. Hey, and we have an exciting one next week with the junior division. Yes. You know. Yeah, we got the Saints in that one, too, we, don't we? We have the Saints and the Collinwood Cobras, and the both Collinwood programs. Cobras in that junior division game next week. Wow. The extra point attempt is no good. So with four minutes and 34 seconds to go, we have Maple Heights Saint Six, Collinwood Cobra Zero. And we're gonna take a break.
Just try one. If you don't like it, it's easy to give up. Uh-oh. Nicotine. I'd better move fast. Up, up and away! Go on, kid. Go on. He's Superman! Superman, is it hard to give up smoking or is it easy like Nicotine says? You no good windbag, Nicotine. No, no, Superman. Leave me one. Please, I need one. <laughs> Just... That's how hard it is, and that's why I never say yes to a cigarette. This is the story of a boy who didn't talk for a long time. The boy liked things to always be the same. Any changes would scare and upset him. The unknown was an unfriendly place. The boy was very sensitive to lights and sounds. So he built secret hiding places where they couldn't get in. The boy didn't like looking people in the eye. He wasn't trying to be mean, it just made him feel uncomfortable. Sometimes he would flap his arms again and again. One day I found out I have something called autism. My family got me help. Slowly, I found my voice and learned all the way I could live with it better. Early intervention can make a lifetime of difference. Learn the signs at AutismSpeaks.org. Hi, I'm Mayor Frank Jackson. You've probably seen media coverage of the growing opioid epidemic in Northeastern Ohio. But what you might not know is how many of these tragedies begin with a seemingly innocent prescription for pain medication. That is why we're teaming with the Cuyahoga County Opiate Marketing Task Force to encourage you to know the risk. Go to the website on your screen to learn which pills are opiates and alternative ways of dealing with pain, which starts as a prescription can end with addiction, so know the risk. Okay, we're back at the Collinwood Athletic Complex with the Collinwood Cobras starting the ball on offense after a Maple Heights score. Yeah, it was a good job by the Saints. Main men, Woods and Johnson, getting the ball downfield and giving the pay dirt to put these uh, Saints up over the Cobras, 6 0. Okay, that's a handoff right there. And he's trying to hit that left side. Wow. And stop for a short loss. And out there you had number three, Marlon Wingfield Jr. You know, the Collinwood Cobras got a lot of weapons on offense. You know, you have number two, Major Perry, number three, Jameer Johnson. Uh, you have number seven, Torrance King. Uh, you have number 19, Aiden Miller. So at this point, Coach Mike Miller has to find a way to get his playmakers to ball out in space and just pick up some first downs. He don't have a lot of time to go. We have 350 and ticking right now in the fourth quarter. Yeah, I would I would definitely get the ball in the, in the hands of my playmakers. Try to get them out on the edges and break some tackles, make some people miss. Fumble the snap and who's got the ball? Bobble snap. We have a flag on the play. Uh oh. Face mask. Oh, looks like we have a face mask. Oh my. Oh my. That's first down. Uh, let's take a look at the replay and we can bring Ralph King in on this to, to see exactly what happened. So he bobbled his knee was down. Oh, right there. Oh yeah. Right there he pulls him down, but he was already down. The football guys are Raining down on the Cobras because that's that's just what they needed to get better field position. Yeah, and that was a dead ball foul. All right, so we got a first down. Cobras take a snap off to the right side. He'll cut back. Uh, oh. He's brought down by three defenders. Wow. If he kept straight up field, I think he made better positive yards. But you can see right there, number 10 on, in on the tackle. A good job. And that's number, that's number three, Jameer Johnson on the carry. 
Yeah, Jameer trying to find some room. And he's but. another top 10 scorer in the league. He's got two touchdowns in the playoffs. All right, so that'll set up. That'll set up a second down and about 10. And Jameer Johnson has the ball off number 19, Aiden Miller, straight up. And that'll be about a four or five yard gain. So Coach Miller has to be in hurry up mode here with, yeah. the, with the clock ticking, about two and a half minutes to go right now in the game. Yeah, he's got to get him in and out of the huddle. This is the time when uh, when you when you coach and you get them trained properly, you only have one number for a play, one, two, or three. And you just they know what to do. You know, and this you is know. the time, this is the point in the game where you want to have a few timeouts in your back pocket. So you might want to start looking at stopping that clock with some timeouts. Yeah. Have you help him get up to get up to the line of scrimmage? Timeout Saints. You know, it's timeout defense. That helps. It sure <laughs> does. Like you make sure that everybody's on the same page offensively. Come out and do this, but they don't want any slip ups uh, on the defense to give this uh, Carlinwood Cobra any chance of winning this ball game. So just early early prediction on a on the offensive um, player of the game. Right now, <laughs> you know, you got we got one score in the game. Yeah, that's so. it. And you know, you got to admit, Elijah Woods and Johnson have been running up and down the field. Pretty much all day because we would be looking at Johnson as the player of the game uh, if he if that touchdown wouldn't have been called back in yeah. the second quarter. So those two guys have really, really made an impression on me and on this uh, defense of the Cobras. But, uh, we'll see who will be the offensive player of the game because we still got two minutes and six seconds left to go in the ball game. You know, I think this has been a well coached. This has been a well coached game today uh, on both sides, you know, both offensively and defensively. Uh, the Saints finally figured out a way to get a draft going there in that third quarter. Uh, and the Cobras had their opportunities as well. And I say, you, you know, you always get, get a few mistakes or you get a turnover. But for the most part, it's been a well coached game. Well, these two teams, you know, they've been they've been out there practicing since June, July. And for them to make it this far, uh, you, we would like to see less penalties, but we know this is a big game for them, and they know it's a big game. And they've been talking about it all week. They've been talking about it, you know, all day now, and they played played this game in the evening. So we uh, we getting what we paid for. A great game. We got a handoff there from Jameer Johnson to that's number 19, Aiden Miller. All right, now hurry up and get in the huddle. Yeah, that'll hurry bring him. That'll huddle. bring him close. He's going to yeah. be a little short, so this should bring up a fourth down and short. Yep. And there's another timeout on the field. This time for the Colts. Yep, as you can see right here, good job picking his way through the defense, getting positive yards. Saints gang tackling, bringing him down, knowing they're going to get maximum effort. So we have another timeout here. And while we take this timeout, we're going to go to a pause. So we'll be right back after this timeout. Need food? We can help. The Greater Cleveland Food Bank's Benefits Outreach Department works within the community to help individuals locate food and apply for SNAP and other public benefits. Weekdays, our Help Center accepts phone calls from 7 a.m. to 6 p.m. and walk-ins from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. Call 216-738-2067 or stop in our facility at 15500 South Waterloo Road. Our benefits outreach counselors are out in the community every day assisting with benefit enrollment and connecting the community to vital resources. Keep your eye out for our food truck, providing free, fresh produce and SNAP enrollment in the community. For more information, visit www.greaterclevelandfoodbank.org slash get help. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families. Until all our families have homes. Until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. Thanks. 
So we're back here now at Collinwood Athletic Complex after that Collinwood Cobras timeout. We're, right now they're staring at a fourth down and short, and this right here could be their season. Yeah, they got to get positive yards. Just get off on the football, get positive yards, and there they go. And, uh, oh. Oh. Now, right now, it's all about the spot right here. It sure is. It looks like they it, gave it to him. It no. looked like he initially had the first down, and he was driven back. Yeah, right there, big play on defense. And trying to get the number of. Whoa, he did not get it. That's a great job on that tackle. Right there, if we take a look at it again, we can see that the angle of the defender, he wasn't going to be able to get around him. Just shot right in, right there. Just came out of defensive backfield, and he knew how important it was. Johnson was the, was the, was the tackler, doing a real good job of making sure that he can get the first down. So I got a question for, uh, we got Ralph King here, official. Uh, a lot of our viewers don't understand the term forward progress. Uh, what did you see in that play right there? Well, I thought that they got the spot a little bit short for me. I thought they did gain that first down on that, and the forward progress was stopped right at the line. So, But their judgment on the field is a lot better than me up here in the booth. But forward progress means when the ball is or the player is stopped and not moving forward. That's a good explanation for it. Yeah, and that's exactly what happened on that play, too. I mean, King Johnson just came shooting through the gap. And it stops all forward momentum of the ball carrier. So, so there we go right uh -oh. there. Oh, oh my. And that's number you zero, Kylan Woods. And he's going to add on to them to those rushing yards for today. And that's number zero right there, Kylan Woods. He's nearing 100 yards rushing on the day. Yeah, doing a real good job getting around that right side, running the daylight. Good block right there by that wide receiver before the defender of Collinwood runs him out of bounds. So the clock is, the clock is stopped as he went out as he was pushed out of bounds. So we're looking on the first down and 10. We got a minute and 12 to go in the quarter in the ball game. Yeah, the only thing uh, Saints don't want to do is call, don't, don't have any turnovers. You want to take care of that ball. You just want to get out of this ball game at this point. Uh oh, penalty. Looks like it's going to be on Collinwood. You know, and, and, and what's scary, you know, the team is in a shotgun, I'm going to say 90% of the time. But you Thank always you. fear Five that parent snap. Repeat the yeah. yeah, and this doesn't help the Cobras at all. As they'll step off five yards, and it'll be. First down again at five, four, the Maple Heights Saints. And they'll keep the ball on the ground. They don't want to make any mistakes. They don't want to have any turnovers here. So I'm pretty sure Woods will get the ball and take it around to the right or the left-hand side. Now we have a timeout by the offense. Must have been some confusion out there on the play. Yeah, Coach Fitzpatrick saw something that uh, something that he didn't like. Because again, all he has to do is snap the football four more times and snap the ball, stand bound, force the defense to use the timeouts. Right. And you know, it's no no formation in football better than victory formation. You know, don't even chance the errant snap or anything. Just get out of this ball game with the win. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Two offensive powerhouses, six to zero. Who would have thought? Collinwood Cobras. I hope the Cobra defense is, uh, coaches are telling them to get the football yeah, if they can. Won. You know, they had a big one in the first quarter where they just basically took the ball and ran down the field. So yeah. if, you, if you can stand that ball carry up and just get to stripping at that ball, you want to do that right now. Exactly. All right, so that's our ready whistle. Line up in shotgun, flank to the right side, and that's power right up the middle. And that's number zero again. Kylan Woods on the ball carry. Yeah, nobody else will probably be carrying the ball again. 
today. Nobody but Woods. They're going to take their time in the huddle. And right here, we have a timeout Got by the time defense. Out. By the Cobras. And with this latest timeout, that'll take us to a break. So we'll be back after this. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stop smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. You think getting dumped by text is harsh? Try getting dumped by tennis ball. My ex-owner drove me out to the woods, yelled fetch, and by the time I bought the ball back, he was gone. Yeah, I was pissed. But the folks at the shelter helped me let go of my anger. I learned coping skills, like taking it to the hole. Boom! Now I'm ready to fetch again. But how about I throw and you run and get it? All right, pal. Hey, Dad. Do we have a gun? What's up? Do we have a gun? Why do you ask that, kiddo? Can I play with it? No, absolutely not. It's not a toy. You know that. Anyway, I need it to protect you, your sister and mom. But what about the eight kids who get shot every day by mistake? Where'd you hear that? Where do you keep it? <laughs> it's hidden. I bet it's on top shelf of the closet, under your sweatshirts. Is it loaded? Remember when I found my Christmas gift? You always told me to be curious. No. No, that's not what I meant. And when it's just me and Mom, I could use the gun to protect her. No, Justin, I promise I'm always here for you. But, Dad, you're not always here. After this timeout, Saints ball on offense, first down and 10. Uh, 52 seconds in count. Yeah, it looked like it was uh, some confusion with the referees and uh, who called the timeout, who didn't call the timeout. So when you look at it, John, both of these programs that's in our championship game today both started out in our spring flag football league. Um, both teams got the kids together in the spring. They played an eight game flag football season, um, competed through the playoffs, and did a tremendous job. And it shows on the field, and they're the final two teams left in our fall tackle football league. Yeah, they uh, just a great job by uh, the, Co the Cobras administration and their coaches. I mean, I know they got to be way ahead of schedule being a championship game in the second year of existence. And uh, to have two other teams in the championship. It's uh, it's got to be very rewarding and satisfying to uh, Maple Heights. Uh, they're not, they're no stranger to winning. Uh, they've got a, a stable of talented kids that go on and do great things. And uh, congratulations to that coaching staff and that community of Maple Heights. They have a, a, a great uh, bunch of followers, great parents, supporters, team moms, and uh, I tell you what, couldn't be prouder of them and the and the and the. Uh, good example that they set for the for the Muni community. Yeah, and when you talk about the Maple Heights Saints, you know, you look at the head coach, uh, Lewis Fitzpatrick, and he's a veteran coach that's been around for years. Lou loves the babies. He loves coaching this level right here. And quite honestly, that's the development of our league. Yes. You know, that's the future of our, our football game. You know, that's how we keep kids engaged and want these kids to, you know, to move on and have careers in sports. That's so, right. You know, Lou does a great job. I commend him for everything he does, his coaching staff, um, so, you know, hats off to John Watson and the Maple High Saints. Yeah, exactly. The Termites is our most important division in Cleveland Muni football. So as we count down the game to triple zeros, we will crown the Maple Heights Saints at the 2019 Termites in this first contest. <laughs> See the coach fall out on the field in this first contest of the championship series. 
in 2019 celebrating 100 years of Cleveland Muni football. Well, once again, hats off to the Collinwood Cobras, second year in existence. Uh, to make it here to this game today, you know, they took a big step forward. Uh, and, you know, but you just got to, you know, you got to crown the champs. These guys played a touchdown better. And great job, Maple Heights. But we're going to give Jason a chance to get down on the field to give away the trophies and award those who won it. We'll be back right after this. Until all our daughters are safe. Until all our children have families. Until all our families have homes. Until all our parents are cared for. We'll be here. Hey, this is Jason Dunn, director of Cleveland Muni Football League. I'm down on the field right now, joined by your 2019 Termite Division City Runner-Up, Collinwood Cobras. So as we kick off our post-game award ceremony, I have a specialty award to give out. Uh, defensive player of the game comes from the Collinwood Cobras. This kid had nine tackles, two tackles for loss. Number 19, Aiden Miller, our outstanding defensive player of the game. How you doing, Aiden? Hey, you played a great game today. Would you like to thank anybody for your performance? Um, yes. Who would you like to thank, Aiden? Um, my coaches, uh, everybody on my team, and we had a good game. Yes, you did. Great job, Aiden. You played a tremendous game today, and I'd like to present you with the 2019 Defensive Player of the Game. Now joining me on the field today is the Chief Operating Officer of Neon Health Services, Ms. Karen Butler, who will do the trophy presentation. All right. Thanks very much, Jason. It's such an honor to be here and to be able to present to the 2019 Termite Division runner-up the trophy to the coach. Coach, join me. Who's the coach? All right. Congratulations. A hard-won game. Great job to the team. What else do you want to say to everyone? Uh, hats off to these guys, man. They came prepared. They played a good game. And they the victories today, man. I just want to thank my team, my coordinator, all the fans that came out. It was one good game. And the best man won. All right. Great job. Congratulations. I am now joined on the field by your 2019 Termite Division champs, the Maple High Saints. Congratulations, Saints. So we're gonna first start this ceremony off with giving out a specialty award. Mm -hmm. This kid had a total of 100 yards of offense and the game's only score. Number zero, Kylan Woods. Would you join me, please? Yeah. Yeah. Mr. Woods is in the building. Hey, you played a great game today. In the fourth quarter, your coach obviously trusted in you because you were the only guy who touched the ball to protect the lead. How did you do that? Uh, I, just work, I, I just work hard, I practice. That's a great job. Now, did your coach have you prepared for today's game? Yes. Yes, he did. Coach Lou, you did a great job. So, to present the award for the 2019 Offensive MVP, you definitely earned this, Kylan. Congratulations. Now, I'm now joined on the field by the Chief Operating Officer of Neon Health Services, Ms. Karen Butler, to present the championship trophy. Thanks again, Jason. So really, this has been a tremendous accomplishment. When you think about all the hard work, when you think about the practices, tell me, what made the difference today? Uh, what made the difference today is um, hard work. Um, 
<coughs> hard work, stay in condition. I uh, want to thank all the parents. Uh, we've been out here since April, so these kids been together because we did flag football. We lost flag football, but we came back with determination we weren't going to lose tackle football. All right, so that means never give up, right? Oh, no, no, we ain't never giving up. All right. Well, congratulations on being the 2019 Termate Division champions. Congratulations. So there's one more special point and fact to add to this. This is the second year in, the, in a row that this team has won the championship. Let's give them a big hand. Open-minded people. The spirit of innovation. Passion. Action. Rock and roll. Cleveland. 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 We are Cleveland. We are Cleveland!